Welcome to Viewpoints. My name is Kathy Bawaya. I'm with the Center for Homeland Defense and Security, and today I'm here with Heather Isverot. Welcome, Heather. A uh, couple of questions for you. What would you say is your primary role here at the Center? So uh, a couple of things, but uh, the big picture is that uh, we are trying to uh, generate a cadre of Homeland Security leaders through education. And over the last 12 years, I've been working uh, on the recruitment aspect, the marketing, and also with the alumni, uh, telling the good stories about how they've used their education and in their agencies, implemented the critical thinking skills and everything that they've learned here at the center back in their agencies to affect change in strategy and policy for Homeland Security. So you travel a lot. And what kind of agencies and disciplines do you work with across the country? Region specific? Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, Homeland Security is such a broad thing. So that incorporates everything a public safety official might do. So you have law enforcement, fire, public health, DOD. You have uh, all the components of DHS. You have the FBI and NORTHCOM. So we work with all of those agencies to ensure that their current and emerging leaders have the opportunity to earn a master's degree and contribute to the national capacity for Homeland Security. What are some of the approaches and who do you speak with when you go out and travel? Who are you looking to speak with? Right, so a lot of people don't understand the value that the center brings until we get in front of them and uh, help them understand education as both a long and a short-term strategy. So by meeting with the executives at the various agencies and helping them to understand that this uh, degree program, as well as the executive leaders program and uh, just all the resources that we offer, it's not just two programs. We have a number of ways um, to reach their agencies. Um, once they understand the value of what we bring, um, they think about succession planning, taking their uh, emerging leaders and asking them to participate in the master's program, or their current leaders, say, in the executive leaders program or the fusion center leaders program. And then um, for those who may not be interested in the programs that we offer, we have these resources like the digital library. Say you need to get smart on a policy that just came out of the presidential directive or something like that, they can look that up at the digital library and um, very quickly understand what's being asked of them. So there are tons of resources, including all the theses that have been written by our master's graduates, available at the Homeland Security Digital Library. Thank you. And what questions are you most frequently asked as you go around the country, speaking to both applicants and agencies mm -hmm. and supervisors that are allowing their people to come to Monterey to take the course? Mm -hmm. We have two campuses, the National Capital Region and the Monterey campus. But um, the questions that are most often asked are, you know, how hard is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it, it does have a reputation for academic rigor, and we wouldn't want to sell it as something that was easy because it is a very difficult program. It is meant to really challenge the uh, critical thinking process for each person involved, whether you're in our executive leaders program or a master's or in our MET program, any of the programs that we offer. So they, they ask how hard it is. Um, some of the top three reasons why people are challenged to apply are, you know, we want the best and the brightest. We want the people who are, uh, have high demand at their agencies. The bosses really want to keep them there and not let them go. So they ask about that. And then, um, you know, they're top stars. So they're probably on committees and they're very busy people. They're usually type A, 80 hours a week. They work on committees. Those are the people that are, um, ver do very well in, in the course. So they have a hard time thinking that they have enough time, but they do. We, we have a very uh, helpful staff and faculty. We know the adult learner. So the challenges of adult learners, uh, you know, the, the time crunch, you know, and, and having a full-time job. This program was designed to meet those challenges and help these people through an 18-month master's degree or a nine-month executive program so that they could do it as um, easily as possible. That doesn't mean the program's easy. Yes. It means that through logistics, through the timing, um, the stuff that they don't have to worry about, all they have to do is really get in the classroom, take in the education, work with their colleagues, and get a degree at the end of it. And a thesis is required. With, I understand there is faculty on hand to help with that if people had not gone through that process before. Mm -hmm. What 
is one of the best pieces of advice that you could give to an applicant mm -hmm. who's getting ready to apply to the program. Right. So getting back to the previous question as well, you know, the time will always be an issue, but you can make time for this if you really want it. And so the people that usually are successful are the ones that have fought to get in. You know, the application process is very rigorous so that people get an idea of what's required in the classroom. What is a little bit of the application process as you're going through and starting? Sure. Sure, so the application has uh, many components. It's on our website, uh, chds.us. You can work on it for, I've had people work on it for years until the boss says, hey, it's time for you. You can get that master's degree now. And they press that finalize button. But they've been working on it for many years. So the application is meant, uh, it has the uh, resume, it has the undergrad and the graduate transcripts, three letters of recommendation, the most important of which is uh, from the boss saying, this person is a current emerging leader in this, in this agency. I will give him or her the time away to complete the program successfully. And um, this person has a, you know, strategic value in the agency. That's a perfect letter of recommendation. The other two letters are you know, from peers, people that can say, yes, this person does what they say they do. They're strategic for our region, for our state, for our, our country. Uh, however, they are a change agent. Those are, those are good letters uh, to have. And you don't really want to get a letter from within your own agency. You want to show that you have influence across agencies. So looking at that in terms of who do I work with or who have I worked with on a project that um, shows strategic value, I would get a, a letter from that person. So then comes the matter of the five essays. And we already know that most of the applicants are rock stars at the tactical operational level, but what we don't know is how they think about things. So it's important when you're doing the essays, writing the essays, to think about how are you a change agent? How do you influence change within your agency, your state, your region, uh, and the country? You know, what kind of influence uh, have you had? But it's more like strategically from that perspective, how have you influenced strategy in your agency or in your past? Some, we have many previous military folks. Using all your experience from all those years and bringing it to, um, this is how I think about issues. These are the gaps in my, in my agency that um, I'm identifying here, and this is how I plan to influence change and um, bridge these gaps. So five essays, three to five pages a piece, no pictures, <laughs> but uh, they're really meant to help us understand how you think. So uh, that's my advice to uh, an applicant. Okay, perfect. And um, when are the next application deadlines? We have two deadlines a year for the master's program, and that would be May 1 and December 1. May 1 fills a September start in Monterey, and the December 1 fills two cohorts, one in the spring in Monterey and one in our National Capital Region uh, campus, which is in Harbors Ferry, West Virginia. And that's at the Global Borders College, the CBP state-of-the-art facility. It's beautiful. Um, that starts in June. So two deadlines. They don't change every year, May 1, December 1. And then um, our executive leaders program also has two deadlines a year, uh, June 15th and January 15th. June 15th fills a September-October start in Monterey. And then January 15th fills a spring start in Monterey. Both those cl uh, ELP classes are held in Monterey. Thank you. And what would happen, as I understand, the numbers and applicants for each cohort are, are expansive. We have a lot of um, applicants applying. What happens if you don't get into the program at the first time? Right, so that's a very good question because a lot of times people work really hard to fit, fit, you know, fill in the application and then when they don't get in the first time, it, it's not a matter of you're not a good applicant. Um, sometimes it's not a good fit and we'll let you know that, but uh, many times it's a matter of not understanding the application or you know, sometimes the, we have a lot of law enforcement or a lot of fire and so in order to have a very diverse Homeland Security table and perspective, um, we have to have different agencies represented. We can't have all, you know, heavy fire or heavy, you know, um, law enforcement. We chronically have issues not having enough public health. I'd love to see more public health applicants. But anyway, so having that, um, you know, uh, too many applicants and then maybe too many from a certain uh, place in the country or a certain jurisdiction, 
then that kind of makes some people wait because we'll, we'll just kind of pull that back and, and put them in the next pool if they're interested in applying. So my advice is if you don't get in the first time, it's not most likely because you're not a good fit. It might be just that you have to wait. And that's especially true with the Executive Leaders Program. We have over 200 applications for 32 spots and, you know, very senior leaders in their organizations. And we do have opportunities for the master's program uh, to go over your application uh, and look at your essays and, and see if there's a way to improve them. And help with the criticality issues. We also, I understand, have... Uh alumni that can assist in going through that application process and help you get through. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Is there anything else that you think is really important when you go to apply? Right. The, the programs, uh, FEMA funds us, the National Preparedness Directorate, in order to build national capacity for homeland security. If you're passionate about homeland security and what you do in your agency, if you want to think more critically about uh, how to do that better, then this is a great program to consider. There's lots of programs around the country, but this program is meant to really help those current and emerging leaders, again, go to that next phase in their career where they have to make decisions, they have to work with other agencies. This is the, that spot for uh, those types of people who are interested in doing that. And for the bosses, for the people that have to let their folks go, I say that this program, uh, by writing a thesis and solving a real problem in your agency, you want to send that person who can make that change. It might be your person that you really count on and you need at the agency, but letting them go through for 18 months and write a, a well-researched thesis will be a great benefit for your agency. So it really helps the individual, but it also helps the agency. And in the end, it helps our country. So it's a win-win it's a for everyone. I've often talked with applicants who use that process of answering the essays as a means to their thesis, mm -hmm. that often they'll describe in their essays the issues that they have within their jurisdiction, mm -hmm. and then they can use that as a, a means for thesis. Where and what capacity are these theses used today? So the number one beneficiary is the agency. The student comes here to write that thesis to solve a problem. But it also has a multiplier effect by being located on our Homeland Security Digital Library. So other practitioners from across the country, maybe from similar dis, uh, jurisdictions, say FDNY wrote something about NIMS and they had solved an issue or something like that, then LAPD or uh, LA Fire Department can look at that and say, you know what, we, we could really use that uh, piece of information. We could use that strategy here. And that happens with smaller jurisdictions as well. So it really does benefit national capacity by having that available for other agencies to take and use. And we also uh, have a university and agency partnership initiative where those theses can be used by other universities to teach so they can build that into their curriculums. And that is a, a huge benefit uh, for, we have over 300 uh, universities and agencies who are in that and building curriculum so that they can use those theses and the other resources we offer here at the center to do that as well. And what are some other resources that you suggest people use and are being used throughout the country? So when uh, a classic example, right? So we have a person who has not been to school in 25 years. And when they were in school, they weren't really paying attention, you know? Just they got busy with their careers. They got right into fire or law enforcement or whatever, and they... They built a huge career and they're a superstar. Well, they want to go now go into a master's degree. What I would recommend is using uh, something like our research methods self-study course. We have modules on our website where you can go back and kind of look at that. And when you're considering a master's program, not even just ours, but any other one, taking that uh, methods, that research methods course, you can look at inquiry and how to ask questions and how to do research. Um, I think that's really helpful if you're considering a master's program. But it's also great for staffers. Say you have staff that needs to learn how to research things, uh, using our self-study courses to gain knowledge, but also to understand how to do their jobs better is a great resource. Again, that multiplier effect uh, goes across all the resources that we offer here at the center.
Good, good. Any other last comments that you'd like to... No, I just really encourage people who are interested in Homeland Security to take a look at our website. Uh, we have a number of viewpoints. We have a number of uh, lectures that are available from our faculty, which are uh, world-class faculty, and uh, stories of how our alumni have implemented their education. So I highly recommend a visit to our website. Heather, thank you. This has been great information. We encourage everyone to get on and apply.